In this video we're going to look at making a, a multiplayer head-up display um, using the widget system. Um, Epic already provide an example of how to do this with a single player, um, but examples of how to do this with multiple players on a split screen game um, are a little bit harder to come by, so I thought I'd give you a quick uh, example of how to set this up. So I've got a first person template set up here, and uh, within this we're going to just modify the first person character so that uh, it has some variables to do with health, energy and some potential coins that the character could collect. Um, I'm going to make a few variables first of all, so start off with a floating point number to represent health. And because of the way that the, uh, the progress bars work in the widget system, they like to have values between 0 uh, and one, zero meaning no health, one meaning full health. So um, we'll have a default value of health of say 0.75. Um, we'll add a second variable, one for energy. And we'll set that with a default value of maybe 0 0.5, so that's 50%. And finally, we'll add a third variable for our coins. And this will be an integer type because it's just counting numbers. There we are, so that's an integer, and we'll leave that defaulted to zero. Um, the next thing to do is just add a little section here so we can debug our player so um, we're going to have three commands h is going to add some health j is going to subtract a bit of health and c is going to be used for incrementing the coins so to quickly increment the coins just grab a get coins node like so and use the variable uh, setting here called increment int, which just adds one more to whatever the value of coins is there. It's a little bit quicker than doing um, than doing the long way around of getting and setting the, the value separately. So that will just count our coins up. Um, health, we need a get health and set health. And all we're going to do is add 0 0.1 to health. And because we need to sort of limit our range between a value of 0 and 1, we're going to use something called clamp, which will just basically chop off any numbers that are above 1 or below 0. So we'll do it like that. And to subtract health, I'm just going to copy and paste that little section there, and we're going to add minus 0.1 to that, and that should just knock the health down a little bit as well. So I'll compile that and run, and if we press H, oops, we do a print string as well, so just to check that works. Just get it to print out whatever our health value is um, here. There you can see the value of health going up to one, and then we can subtract that as well. The values goes down, and then coins. You can see our coin counter going up there. So we know all that is working properly. Um, Obviously, you could spend a little bit more time kind of tidying this up and perhaps use a proper subtract um, node there, but uh, that seems to work for testing purposes anyway. Um, so, we'll just save that. Um, the next thing we need to do is create our widget, which we can do um, just by going onto the user interface section there, right clicking in the content browser, picking user interface, going to widget blueprint. 
let's call this widget UI and then we open that up and we need to quickly uh, just create a, an interface uh, for our player so you've got two tabs in this window one is the designer tab which is for the layout and the graph tab which is for actually adding the various bits of blueprint to make it work um, what we'll do here is just basically base it upon one that Unreal provide in their getting started guide for the widgets um, so this uses a few sections um, I'm going to use something called a horizontal and vertical uh, box so if we look for those there's a horizontal box so uh, we're going to grab one of these and just pop it in the corner there this is where our uh, health bars are going to sit so we'll give it a name call it horizontal box and then bars like so um, and within that we are going to add um, two vertical boxes so we can just do that by dragging this onto this hierarchical view here it's quite important you get the, the view sort of set up um, the first box here is going to contain the, uh, the bits of text so we can get those from the comment section here and just pick text so we're going to drag two of those in so they're nested like that again we might want to just give these uh, a bit of extra information so the first block there is going to have the words health as its display text uh, the second block uh, is going to have energy as its display text and then the second um, vertical box here this is actually where the, uh, the health bars are going to be stored so we'll just drag a couple of progress bars into there now what you'll find is when they first come in they're a bit kind of squashed um, so you've got to set this vertical bars um, vertical box section to be fill and then do the same with each bar as well that will make them fill up the entire sort of space of that panel. Um, you might want to customize the color so I always set them to just a you know, not at zero so you can actually see the colors then and health maybe that becomes green I believe energy is blue um, that works like that. The second uh, bit we need to set up then is we'll just minimize the box section and go for another uh, horizontal box drag them to the canvas panel there and this is where the coin section is going to be and we'll just move this so that it sits in the opposite corner of the screen um, and we'll also anchor it so that it's anchored to the top right rather than the uh, top left like the, the health section is in here we're going to add a couple of text boxes again so the first text block is going to have the words coins in it second text block will be the actual um, display of the number of coins you have. Just a couple of question marks in there. there we are. So that's the, the basic sort of setup. Um, we now need to link up our um, health energy bars so they display the correct um, information when the player loses health, gains health and so on. Um, A quick save on that. So we're going to go over to the uh, graph section and we're going to get the construct event here. Um, basically we need to um, tell our widget to remember which um, 
play upon it is uh, looking at with regards to the uh, health values and so on. So we need to do something called get owning player pawn. Uh, once we've got that, we then need to cast that to our player character. In our case, it's the uh, first person character. Obviously, if you're using a different template, third person or so on, you need to use a different cast node there. Um, and once we've got that, we can then access various properties. So within this, you can see we can get hold of our coins or our health values. But actually, all we want to do is remember a reference to this particular um, actor within the within the game. So this create new variable, which uh, you can you can do here by going basically promote to variable. It makes our new variable here. Um, this is basically the, the the widget's kind of character that that it's interested in. So we'll call this my character. saves us a reference there. This comes in uh, really handy now so if we hit compile and save um, we can then just link up using this bind drop down menu here that you'll find next to the percentage section on the health bar. Um, you see the my character is now uh, in place and we can choose health from the drop down. Same with energy, my character and then look for the energy one and then for coins what you'll find is you can't directly bind to the coins variable, it doesn't show up. Um, that's because coins is a number, it's an integer, um, whereas the actual text box is a piece of text. So we've got to do a custom binding using this create binding option instead. Um, within that, we can get a reference to my character again. We can get a reference to the coins, so we choose get coins. And then we just hook that up to the return value and it will do a little conversion, converts the integer into a piece of text. Uh, that makes it work properly. Um, you notice that the actual function name is just called get text zero. It's a bit um, unclear what it actually does. So we could rename that to get coins as text. Just so we know what that node does there compile and save and you'll see now that on the binding for the text here uh, we've got a reference to our get coins as text um, function so we'll compile and save all of that um, that's the basis of the um, widget setup um, the next thing we need to do is to tell our first person character to initialize and create that widget um, so that will be done via the uh, begin play event, particularly for the, the first uh, the first player in the game, player zero, as it were. Um, we're just going to do a sequence node here because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on further down here that's to do with setting up um, head map displays and motion controllers and so on. So we don't want to interfere with any of that. Um, so once we're on that section there, um, we will uh, initialize our uh, UI. So first of all, we need to do something called get a controller. Uh, and that will get the controller for this particular uh, first person character. Now you notice that um, sometimes you'll see people using get player controller. And the problem with this is it's hard coded to player zero, and so it's quite difficult then to kind of change that for other players. You know, if you've got a multiplayer split screen game going on, um, so we use this one instead, which is much more kind of useful and reliable for getting the controller for this particular uh, instance of the first person character. Um, once we've got the controller, we need to tell it that it's a um, player controller because it could potentially be an AI controller that's oops, that's in charge of it. So we'll use the cast to player controller node. And we'll hook that in like so. Now that that's in place, um, we'll do something called create widget. just 
tell it that the owning player is this particular first person character. We want to create the widget UI that we made earlier. And finally, we want to do something called add to player screen. Rather than using add to viewport, which only supports single player games, we can use add to player screen, um, which supports split screen games. So it's a new mode that was added a few versions back, but it's kind of super useful. Um, once all that's in place, um, we can do a compile and save, and then we'll give it a go, see if it works. So you can see how our coin count is going up. If we press H, our health bar can go up, and J bring it down again. We've not connected energy to anything yet, it's just there as an example. Um, but you can see this all works with a single player game, no problem. Um, next thing we want to do, if we want to turn this into a multiplayer game, um, is to uh, open the level blueprint. And this is just a quick way of testing this. Um, And we're going to add a node in here called uh, create player. Now this will just add a new player um, and it become player one, player two and so on each time we call this. Um, we will add a begin play, so at the beginning it will create a new player for us. Um, we'll also make it so that we can use the P key to add some extra players, so up to four players it will support, um, compile that, and there'll be a slight problem when we run it, but I'll explain what goes on. So you can see player one's got his energy bar, but player two hasn't, um, and if we make the other players, they're missing their, their UI. Now the reason for this is that um, when the begin play runs on those new players, for whatever reason, the, uh, the controller isn't properly initialized and it will fail on this cast here um, so a good way of making this uh, work is to use the uh, event called possessed so event possessed um, and we can hook that into here um, but it's worthwhile doing an extra check at this point here um, check of something called get controlled pawn um, because what happens is if you use this event possessed then when player one the first player in the game is made it will also call this event possessed and it causes some issues with the doubling up of the uh, the widget so um, we can use this get controlled pawn um, and check to see if it's valid using this is valid function here um, Now the default player, player one, when they get possessed, we find that their pawn is not valid. Um, whereas the other players that spawn in later on, it is valid here. So it's just one of the kind of slightly quirky things that Unreal does. Um, but now if we run the game, all being well, we'll hit play. And you'll see player one and player two both have got UIs. Press P a couple more times, and you can see that our extra players also have uh, have UIs and you can see that I can manipulate player one's health without it affecting the other players in the game. Um, so there you are, that's the, uh, the basics of setting up uh, a multiplayer split screen game where everyone's got their own separate UIs. Um, it's just important to remember that you use the um, get controller um, method here and also in your uh, widget when you set up the widget via its construction script. Uh, then you're using also this get owning uh, player pawn here as well rather than using the, um, the player controller uh, reference.